The white tree, the tree of the king, will never bloom again. Why are they still guarding it? They guard it because they have hope. Faint and fading hope that one day it will flower. Hey, Sephiris. The white tree stands as the symbol of the kingdom of Gondor. It watched and wilted over Minas Tirith in the waning years of the Third Age. But its history goes back to the dawn of Middle-earth, to the greatest empire of men, and to one of the first treacheries of the Dark Lord Melkor. Now, trees have a long history in Tolkien's Legendarium as symbols, as sources of life and signs of divinity. And the lineage of the white tree can be traced all the way back to the two trees of Valinor, one being called Telperion, and the other Laurelin. Talperion was the elder of the trees. In that first hour in which he shone, the Valar named it the opening hour, and counted from the ages of their reign in Valinor. At the twelfth hour, Laurelin began blossoming. The days were so that Laurelin was waning, but Talperion was waxing. But the light that was spilled from the trees endured long. These two trees, Talperion and Laurelin, glowed silver and gold, and lit the lands of Valinor. Kind of like uh, the land of the gods, where the Valar lived, throughout the day and night. But as with all things that are good, holy and wholesome in this world, in the year 1495 of the Year of the Trees, they were destroyed by Melkor and Ungoliant. Ungoliant being this sort of giant darkness, demon, spider thing. <sighs> Melkor sprang with his black spear, and he smote each tree to its core and wounded them deep. Ungoliant sucked it up, and then going from tree to tree, she set her beak to their wounds, till they were drained. The loss of the two trees was devastating, but it was not without hope. So back in the early ages, in the year of the trees, in the first age, and a little bit in the second age, the Valar had a tendency to interfere in Middle-earth, to get involved when things went wrong, and here was no different. Yvanna made for them a tree like to a lesser image of Telperion. Galathilion it was named. Its seedlings were many, and one was afterwards planted in Tolaresia, and it prospered there, and it was named Caliborn. So these two new trees, Galathilion and Caliborn, were made in the image of Telperion, which supposedly shone with the white glimmer of a silver dawn. And it's here that we see where the tree of Gondor got its colour from. Telperion was the first white tree. Now just as Galathilion was made in the image of Telperion, and Caliborn was a sapling of Galathilion, a sapling of Caliborn eventually found its way onto the island of Numenor. Think of Numenor kind of like the Greek myth of Atlantis. Tolkien drew a lot of parallels between those two stories. Numenor was kind of this grand empire of men who were like eight feet tall and had lots of magic and are responsible for a lot of the architecture that you can see in ruins throughout Middle Earth. And Tolkien wrote that the elves still would come sailing to Numenor. They brought to Numenor many gifts. A seedling they brought of Caliborn, the white tree that grew in the midst of Edesia. Nimloth, it was named, and it flowered in the evening, and the shadows of the night it filled with its fragrance. And this is where we begin to see what the white tree symbolizes. It was a symbol of the relationship between elves and men, which pairs perfectly with Aragorn's heritage as the heir to Gondor's throne. You see, he can draw his line back to the unions of the firstborn elves and the Edain men. Just as the white tree is the symbol of the union of these two peoples, so is Aragorn. But it's with Nimlot that the story of Gondor's white tree truly begins. The 24th king of Numenor was a man by the name of Tar Pelantir, and he was gifted with foresight and prophecy. In the year 3177 of the Third Age, he prophesied that when the tree perished, then also would the line of kings come to its end. To which those around him thought, pfft, what? No, who could possibly kill all of us off? But for all Numenor was powerful, it was also corruptible, and Sauron took advantage of that, as he always does. And he wormed his way into the courts of the king, and this was in the time of Isildur! around the year 3300 of the Second Age, then when Sauron urged the king to cut down the white tree, Nimlot the fair, Isildur passed through the guards and took from the tree a fruit that hung upon it. After Isildur steals one of the fruit of Nimlot to save it, we learn an interesting detail about the white trees of Gondor. Tolkien wrote that Isildur was assailed and fought his way out, receiving many wounds, and he escaped, but his strength failed. But when its first leaf opened, then Isildur, who had lain long and come near to death, arose and was troubled no more by his wounds. This passage does suggest that the white trees of Gondor have magical properties, that they have healing powers, and after all they are descended from Telperion, the divine embodiment of light and life. Alternatively, Tarpalantir talked about how the line of kings and the white trees were intimately connected, that one would die with the other. That connection between the two may have healed Isildur as someone of royal blood, though it is important to note that just because this sampling healed Isildur doesn't mean that the white tree we see 
in Minas Tirith has magical powers. An overall theme of Tolkien's Legendarium is that magic is dying out, it is leaving Middle-earth, much like the elves, that things are becoming less fantastical and divine over time. It's quite likely that these magical properties that we may have seen in the White Trees of the past died out long before we ever get to Aragorn. And what did he do after that, Tim? That's a great question, you malcontent pot plant. Actually, let's make you content. Smiley Blowy. After escaping the downfall of Numenor, Isildur planted that fruit that he stole in Minas Ithil. Minas Ithil you might know more by its other name, Minas Morgul, which was renamed as in the year 2002 of the Third Age, after the Nazgul captured it again. And this was the time of the first White Tree of Gondor. But Sauron, having a strong dislike for Garni, got up to his usual shenanigans in the year 3429 of the Second Age. When therefore Sauron saw his time, he came with a great force against the new realm of Gondor, and he took Minas Ithil and he destroyed the white tree of Isildur that grew there. But Isildur escaped, and taking with him a seedling of that tree. Just as the line of kings survived through Isildur, so did the white tree. People sort of give Isildur a bit of a hard time for Isildur! Which is fair enough, causing the Dark Lord to return in a war where thousands perished, but he did save a tree. It is after that point, in the second year of the Third Age, that the white tree arrives in Minas Anor, which would later be known as Minas Tirith. It was initially planted there in memory of Isildur's brother, Anarion, who died in the siege of Barad-dûr. And at first it flourished. This was the time of the second white tree of Gondor. But this tree here that we see in the Return of the King isn't actually the one that Isildur planted. In the year 1636 of the Third Age, a great plague swept across Gondor, in fact across most of Middle-earth, that wiped out half of Ravanion. Think of it like Middle-earth's Black Plague. Tolkien wrote that when King Telmnar died, the white tree of Minas Anor also withered and died. But Tarandor, his nephew, who succeeded him, replanted a seedling in the citadel. Interestingly here, Tolkien sort of reiterates the relationship between the line of kings and the white trees. The white tree didn't die from the Great Plague. No, it died because King Telemnar did. Just as the white trees healed Isildur, it died with King Telemnar. But as mentioned, Terendor replanted the tree, and this was the third white tree of Gondor, and it's the one that we all recognize from the courts of Minas Tirith. But it wasn't always dead. Obviously, Tim. It blooms until 2852 of the Third Age, when Blake Thor II, the 21st steward, died. The White Tree died also in Minas Tirith, but it was left standing until the king returns, for no seedling could be found. Interestingly, the line of kings actually died out around the year 2050, when Eonur went off to fight the Witch King and didn't return. The fact that the White Tree survived some 800 years after the line of kings somewhat ended suggests that the magical connection between the line of kings and the White Trees wasn't as strong anymore. And so Minas Tirith found themselves with the dead tree, wilted and lifeless, hoping to one day be revived like the line of kings. Its fate mirrors that of Gondor as a kingdom in power and leadership. The tree is a metaphor made flesh. Metaphor made wood? Made bark? Don't know. Then in the year 3019, Aragorn happened to come across a sapling in the mountain over Minas Tirith. There sprang a sapling tree with young leaves long and shapely, dark above and silver beneath. This is a sapling of the line of Nimlot the Fair, and that was the seedling of Galathilion, and that a fruit of Talperion of many names, eldest of the trees. For if ever a fruit ripens, it should be planted, lest the line die out of the world. Here it is lain, hidden on the mountain. Tolkien once again parallels the life of the white trees with that of the line of kings. A sapling, like Aragorn, hidden for so long from the world. But that's all for me, and that is the story of the White Tree of Gondor. A massive thank you to my uh, patrons on Patreon, who support me and all the videos that I make. It really does make a huge difference. I tried to find out supremely in Amishka because he's adorable and I like having him in videos, but he's gone for the moment and I'll see if I can find him for next video. My question today is, what is your favorite tree? I'm afraid I'm gonna have to be extraordinarily ordinary and say I like oak trees. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you to Rebecca for sending in this photo of her wearing the official Sub Fury t-shirt. If you want to get one, there's a link to that down in the description below. All of the money from that goes towards our, our two charities that we chose as a community, A21, which works towards stopping human trafficking, and the World Wildlife Fund, which preserves the environment and animal habitats. In the meantime, I love you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook, or email stuff at your email address and links in the description below. Stay nerdy, Sub Furies, and I'll see you in the future.